Hi everybody, it's Rebecca Virginia and today I'm going to be showing you some unconventional ways to use wood items from the Dollar Tree. Let's get started. For this DIY, I am using some pretty unconventional items from the Dollar Tree. We have some wood beads, a Christmas decor piece, some jute, some Valentine's decor, and picture frames. And I'm gonna show you exactly how you can recreate this DIY. I began this project by taking four of the picture frames from the Dollar Tree. You can choose whatever four that you like the most. I really liked the texture on these frames, so I went with four of the five by sevens in this texture. And the first thing that I did, I wanted this to be a bit more farmhouse and kind of have that weathered look to it. So to achieve this, I am replacing the black frame and instead using some apple barrel paint in the shade Cypress Umber. And I am painting all four of the frames brown. And to turn the brown frames into some farmhouse frames, I also grabbed some white paint and my favorite stippling brush, which is from the Dollar Tree Crafter Square section. This is the best brush. I have spent more money on expensive brushes, but this dollar one is still my go-to fave for creating you know, the distressed farmhouse look. And I'm just going over pretty heavy handedly the picture frames. I want it to be very white, so I'm going pretty much over everything. And I really liked the way the white paint clung to the texture in the frames. So I liked how these came out. And now we're beginning our construction. So for two of the frames, I took my miter shears and I did cut into them. And then the other two frames I am not going to cut into. And I'm instead taking some hot glue and hot gluing them together. If these frames had a prettier backing, I wouldn't even need to do this step. You could just use two picture frames. But I thought the backing was not very pretty and you're gonna be able to see it. So that is why I am stacking the two frames on top of one another and hot gluing them. Now I'm moving over to the two frames that I cut into. And of course the reason why I cut them is so that I could place it inside of the frames that we hot glued. And I did add a little bit of hot glue because that area that we cut, I don't want it to be cut anymore. So I am hot gluing the picture frame back into place. And then once we have the two picture frames secure inside of the other two picture frames, I'm gonna go ahead and repeat the process we did on the first two, placing down some hot glue and hot gluing our two picture frames together. And now we kind of have this puzzle of one set of picture frames inside another set of picture frames. Once I figured out the placement of where I wanted the inner picture frame to hang, I just secured that in place with some hot glue on the top and a little bit of hot glue on the bottom just so that it wasn't moving around. And now we need to create some legs for our inner picture frame so that it's even. I found that one large wood bead stacked with one smaller wood bead was the perfect size to hold up that second frame. You can see it took a little bit of trial and error. I first tried to do two big beads and those were too large. So once I figured out the placement, I flipped our project upside down so that I could hot glue on these wood beads. I'll have them linked down below. I have them in my Amazon shop. I get my wood beads usually from Amazon. And for the topper decoration, this is actually a wood snowman that I picked up during the Christmas time season. If you don't have this, you can again, just use the wood beads and stack them. But I thought that the snowman was a perfect decor piece to kind of be the focal point on our DIY. To create the hanging element in this craft project, I took a wood heart that I picked up from the Dollar Tree during the Valentine's Day season. But if you don't have this, you can just cut a heart out of some cardboard or even some thicker cardstock material. And then I grabbed my trusty jute or twine that I use on a lot of projects and just wrapped and wrapped and wrapped in all sorts of different directions around this heart to create some cool texture. And then I cut off the last piece, hot glued it, and made sure to leave a tail at the center of the heart so that 
I could hot glue this into the frame and it actually worked out perfectly because there was kind of an upper area of the frame that you can't see when you're looking at the project. So it hid the hot glue really well. And I just hung the heart from the center of our frame. I absolutely love how this project came out. I feel like you would never know that it was made using some wood picture frames from the Dollar Tree. I think it looks a lot more craftsman than that if I do say so myself. And the best part is you can change out the greenery inside of the frame to fit any season. In our next project, I'm going to be showing you how to take an unlikely item from the crafter square section of the Dollar Tree and get some really great wood pieces from it. We're going to be making this fresh flower market window decor. To get started with this, the unlikely item is going to be the canvases from the Dollar Tree. I picked up a bunch of these when Dollar Tree was still only a dollar, so I got a little bit of a better deal on this one. And what I did is just rip off all of that canvas so that I am left with four smaller square wood frames. This is really nice wood. A lot of the times Dollar Tree uses that MDF board um, on a lot of their signs, but this one was legit wood. So it was really nice when you revealed the canvas off of the board to be left with some really nice wood pieces. And I just grabbed a wet paper towel and some wood stain. I like using the antique stain by Waverly and I just went over all the frames so that it kind of had a little bit of this darker brown look to it. Then to create our larger window piece, I am taking hot glue to hot glue the pieces of wood together. So instead of just having four small wood pieces, I now have this larger kind of window frame decor piece. I forgot to hit record on my phone for this part, but I did make just a super quick burlap bow using some of the burlap ribbon that's wired from the Dollar Tree. So I did place that at the top of our frame. And then I picked up this fresh flower market sign. I picked it up in the spring at Dollar Tree, but mine currently still has not only this sign, but also some of the circular signs um, that talk about herbs and mint and things. Then for the flowers, I am using Sola wood flowers. I know that I used to have a coupon code with them. So I will look back through my email. I don't think it's active anymore. I'm not sure, but I will double check with that. Um, for you guys. So if I do have it, I'll place it in the description box below. But the Dollar Tree is starting to get wood flowers. It's in the usually like gardening section around the fairy gnome kind of supplies around your garden. So definitely check that out because they have some really great wood flowers. You would just need to dye them on your own. And then the smaller pieces of lavender are sprigs from a larger floral pick, which is from the Dollar Tree. Once I hot glued everything into place, the real challenge began because I could not decide where I wanted to place this. I love the way that it looked outside in nature. I also loved it inside. So I finally settled on the screened in porch. So I got a little bit of the outside and a little bit of the inside. The next DIY, I'm taking some wood pieces from the Dollar Tree and leftover burlap that I had and creating this Bible verse sign. This is a super easy DIY and I think that taking the wood pieces from the Dollar Tree really elevates it rather than just a hanging burlap sign. We have these really nice wood elements. But first off, we're starting with our burlap. This one is about 11 by 11. And I found this Bible verse from Ruth, one of my favorite Bible verses. If you put where you go into your design space search, you will be able to find this exact design. And I did adhere this using some heat transfer vinyl and my heat press. Then I went ahead and took the Waverly Antique Stain and just stained my four pieces of wood and the two that I thought came out the prettiest, I went ahead and hot glued onto the front of our sign, but I did make a mistake. I forgot that burlap has all these little holes in it. So when I placed down the hot glue, it did go through the burlap onto my craft table. So for the next one, I remedied that by taking some parchment paper and placing that underneath so that the hot glue didn't run out onto my table. 
then to really create a nice balanced weight to this sign, we're also going to be attaching the wood pieces to the back, adhering that with some hot glue, and that will just make sure that the sign isn't more weighted in the front and you know hanging at a weird angle. This way it'll be evenly distributed. Then to turn it into a hanging sign, I grabbed some wire jute from the floral section of the Dollar Tree and just made a little loop. And I'll be placing that between the two wood boards at the top of our sign. I've seen signs similar to this one at Hobby Lobby for more than double the price. Today's video is a collaboration with some of my YouTube friends, Yelena from It's Blondie, Megan from Crafty Quinn, and Liz Moore from Decal and More. Please make sure to check out their channels and their videos down below and let them know that I sent you. I'll have all of their information linked down in the description box. This next DIY is kind of a bonus one that I threw in at the end. It is using the macrame crafter square package from the Dollar Tree. I picked this up. It has some string and some wood beads and wood pieces. And after reading the instructions, I think I was even more confused than when I started. So I thought that I would film myself doing it because maybe some of you were also a little bit confused by the Dollar Tree's directions on the inside. So I'm starting off with cutting all of my string into eight equal pieces. And then once I did that, I placed it on the kind of larger wood piece, which is going to be the main area. And I placed a wood bead also through that main one. And then taking all of our other strings, I am going to start creating our macrame. So I am taking the other string pieces and just knotting them also on the macrame. I am doing three on each side. So we have the center piece, which is going up. And then we're going to have three hanging pieces on our, I would call it a stick. I guess a wood dowel would be more appropriate, but I kept calling it the stick. And now we're gonna start the macrame and we're gonna be working in sections. So right now I'm working on the section of the four strings on the right. And what you do is basically go over and under a bunch and don't worry, I'll show it a lot more <laughs> as you watch this video. But okay, so here I am creating my first knot and I'm taking the string that is on the left-hand side and I am going under the two middle strings and then I'm going to place that string kind of over the last one on the far right. And then the far right, I'm gonna do the opposite. I'm gonna go over instead of under and place the string through the little loop that I have created and pull that tight. And if you're a little confused, don't worry, I'm gonna show it a bunch more times. We worked on the four strings to the right. Now we're moving to the middle. I take the string on the right side, go under the two middle pieces and leave it draped. Then I take the string on the left side and this time I'll be going over the middle two pieces. And once I go over the middle two pieces, I'll put it through the loop that we created with the right hand string and pull that tight. Then I'm going to repeat the process, this time starting with the string on the left side, going underneath the middle two pieces, and then just leaving it draped over the string on the right hand side. And then I will take the string on the right hand side and go over the two middle pieces and through the loop that we created and pull it all tight. I did the exact same thing with the four strings to the left. So now we have our middle, our right, and our left section with two knots. And now we're going to do basically the exact same thing, but this time the far two strings to the left and the far two strings to the right, they're not gonna be involved. So I just placed these under some little wood scrap pieces that I had laying around just so that it wouldn't get in my way and I wouldn't get confused with the strings. Also divided the middle section so that I have two strings in the middle and two strings from the right section. And we're going to repeat the exact process that we have been doing, taking the string on the right side, going under the two middle sections, over the left section, then taking the left string, going over 
whatever the middle piece is and through the little loop that we have created and then pulling that taut. And I will do that twice. And then once I have completed doing that twice, I'm going to move on to the other side of the middle section. So those other two strands in the middle and the two strands on the closest to the center, but from that left section. And I'll be doing the exact same thing, creating the two knots and pulling them tight. Now you can really start to see the macrame coming to life and we're gonna finish it off with these diagonal pieces. So I'll be taking the string on the furthest left-hand side and just making a really simple knot over the string closest to it. And I did a double knot, but you could do a single one if you wanted to. Um, and then you're just continuing the process. So that far left-hand string, you're kind of pulling it at a diagonal. And then with the string closest to it, you are creating a knot. And again, I just made a double knot to make sure that everything was nice and secure. And while you are creating those knots, I was just being mindful to constantly be pulling that longer far left string kind of at a diagonal. I'm not sure if there was a better way to do this, but I just found to create that diagonal, I kind of just kept manipulating the string and pulling it at that diagonal to make sure that the knots were lining up. I didn't want to bore you all with showing you how to do it also on the right hand side so I used some editing magic and this is how it came out after I completed not only the left side but the right side too. Then I placed a wood bead on the middle two strings and then gathered up all the strings underneath the wood bead and took our very last string that we have and just made a knot and wrapped that a bunch underneath the bead. And then I just knotted it off at the end and whatever the excess of string was there, I didn't cut it off, I just let it hang down with the rest of the strings. I cut off all the strings at the same length and then once they were cut, I started to unravel the strings. This is super easy, but it does take a little bit of time. And then once you have unraveled all of your strings, it kind of gives this crimped effect. And to make it into a hanging piece of decor, I just knotted off a loop at the very top of our macrame. Thanks so much for watching. I'll be back next Thursday with a fall DIY video. Until then, keep searching, keep creating.